I'm Rhett Hagler with Solar Shade Solutions. Today I'm going to walk you through the typical installation process for a Solar retractable awning. We'll cover the basics and we'll also address some of the more common questions we've heard through the years. Since every installation is different, we highly recommend you follow the instructions in the installation guide that comes with each awning. The good news is, it's not as hard as you think. By the end of this video, you should be completely comfortable with the typical installation. And if you ever have questions, just contact your Solaire sales representative. We also have this video and other helpful tips online at youtube.com slash Solaire Shade Solutions. So if you're ready, let's get cracking. You will receive your customer's awning in a large, well-packaged box like this one. We recommend opening the box and reviewing the contents before you travel to the customer's home. Pieces can occasionally get lost in shipping. It's rare, but it happens. And it's always better to find out before you're on site. Be extremely careful when opening the box with a sharp blade. The awning fabric is exposed inside the box and can easily be cut if you aren't paying close attention. If the awning came with a hood, set it aside. We'll come back to it later in the process. Read through the installation guide for instructions. There you'll find the recommended tools for the job. Here's a quick list. A partner, two eight to 10 foot ladders, a variable speed electric drill, a range of drill bits from 1 8 inch to 1 half inch, a level, a chalk line, a hammer, two screwdrivers, a flathead and Phillips head, an open end wrench, 17 millimeters and 13 millimeters, a socket set with standard and metric sizes, a 13 millimeter deep socket, a stud finder, a utility knife, a tape measure, a metric Allen wrench set, an extension cord, appropriate type and number of fasteners, and any additional tools that may be needed for specific installations. Check the enclosed parts list and take an inventory of everything that's included. Most importantly, make sure that you have the correct number of brackets for your particular installation. For units 16 feet and under, there should be four brackets. One additional bracket is required for every four feet of width beyond 16 feet. If you're concerned about the number of brackets you received, contact customer service. And finally, you want to be sure that you have the appropriate number and types of fasteners, which can vary according to the type of structure you're working with. We've provided all the components you'll need for a successful installation. But if you find you're missing some parts, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're here to help. To prepare the job site, you'll need to confirm the awning's exact location. The minimum mounting height is eight and a half feet off the ground. The optimum mounting height is nine and a half feet off the ground for an awning with a 10 foot, two inch projection. The wall or roof where the awning is to be installed should be an open expanse of eight to 12 inches high by the overall awning width. The area should also be free of any obstructions like light fixtures, downspouts, or electrical boxes. Determine the two outermost points for the awning and mark them on the wall. Using your choice of leveling device, mark a straight level line that connects the two points. Now we'll learn how to attach the mounting brackets and optional hood and complete the installation. You'll need to determine the best location for the brackets on the mounting surface and the corresponding location on the mounting bar of the awning. Two of the brackets should be placed within 12 inches of each arm preferably on the outside of the arm attachment along the mounting bar. The rest of the brackets should be evenly spaced between the outer brackets. All brackets must be attached into studs or other structural members. It is okay if brackets aren't exactly evenly spaced as long as they are attached to studs. Avoid placing the brackets where they'll conflict with the arms or the pitch adjustment bolts. Put marks where each of the brackets should be fastened to the structure. Drill holes where you've set your marks. Secure the mounting brackets using lag bolts, ensuring a tight fit. The brackets should be level and plumb. By using a line and shims, you can assure the brackets are in the same plane. This can be checked by running a line across the brackets and using shims where needed. 
Now that the brackets are in place, you're ready to install the hood. Hoods are optional, but they're highly recommended. First, install the hood adapters by connecting each of them to the brackets. Then, prepare the hood for installation by inserting the bolts and attaching the two end covers. Now you can connect the hood to the hood adapters. Now you are ready to lift the awning and set it into place. This step will require at least two people as these awnings can weigh anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds. Lift the awning by grabbing the mounting bar. It's the only part designed to carry the weight of the entire awning. Carefully carry the awning up the ladders and place the mounting bar into the brackets. Line up the ends of the awning with the marks you made earlier. Fasten the awnings to the mounting brackets with the bolts provided. We're just about to wrap things up. There are a few last steps to ensure everything's working properly. Locate an electrical outlet and plug the awning in. An extension cord should be used during setup only and should not be considered a permanent power supply. If the homeowner requires additional electrical work, refer them to a licensed electrician. Test the unit by pressing the down or bottom button on the remote. The awning should extend. To test the stop, press the middle button. And to retract the unit, press the up or top button. Once you've determined the remote and motor are functioning properly, extend the awning to its maximum projection to ensure there is proper pitch and that the front bar is level. Since this is the first time you've seen the fabric unroll, you want to check it for any issues. You also want to extend and retract the awning a few times to make sure everything's working properly. Once you've done that, clean up the job site and you're ready to make it home in time for dinner. I'm Rhett Hagler with Solaire Shade Solutions. Thanks for watching.